Sam Irvin says this is the first race he's been in with a D, the party affiliation next to his name, and he's not happy about it. I'm the Democratic nominee. I make no bones about that. But I don't get up every morning and say, what is the agenda for my political party today? The Democrat from Morganton says partisan judicial races and huge amounts of campaign money don't help the public's view of the courts. All of those things tend to suggest that people are going to view courts as more, in, more partisan and more political. And typically, perception tends to become reality at some point. Irvin has served on the State Utilities Commission, the Court of Appeals, and is just ending his eight-year term on the Supreme Court. I think people can be confident that I do, in fact, follow the law rather than, you know, try to engage in political activities while wearing a robe, we look at whatever record that person might have generated over the course of their career to see if you can see some evidence that that person properly applies the law to the facts, not based on his or her political beliefs. For most voters who don't have the time or maybe the interest in reading your decisions over the years, what else do they have to help them make a decision on who to vote for? Well. They've got several things. First of all, news coverage like this gives people information and people will see this interview and they will see us talking and they can make a determination about whether they think what I say is credible or not. Major issues are expected to come before North Carolina Supreme Court, such as abortion. Planned Parenthood, which supports reproductive rights, has endorsed Irvin. Does it matter which party is in control of the Supreme Court? Uh, it seems to me it matters that we have judges, and the, it, what it matters is do we have judges with open minds that are willing to do what I've described as the proper role of the court. In a, non, in a nonpartisan election system, it shouldn't. You and your opponent are both running away from party, mm -hmm. and at the same time your two parties are fighting tooth and nail to win this seat. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a symptom of, of the problem that I pointed to earlier. I didn't make the decision to make these races partisan. What is the biggest difference between you and your opponent? To me, the biggest difference between me and my opponent is pretty simple. I've got 23 years of judicial and quasi-judicial experience. I've got a level of experience that he doesn't have. The other thing I would say is, and I hate to sound like a broken record, but I'm going to go back to it, when I say what my philosophy is and how I decide cases, I can point to specific instances. Recusal has come up this past year a couple of different times, right. and I'm wondering if you think anything needs to be done to either strengthen, leave it alone, improve it, or leave it as and it I, is. And it's not really appropriate for me to comment on that, but to say that I think that we ought to do X, Y, or Z with respect to the provisions of the Code of Judicial Conduct would put me in the position of perhaps prejudging something that I would be called upon to decide in my official capacity. Irvin points out that he cannot give his opinions on the issues of the day, such as abortion, voting rights, and education funding. What do we need to do as officials within that court system to make sure that we don't do anything to impair public confidence in the fairness of the impartiality? We can't fix that problem, but we can certainly do things that don't make it worse. Sam Irvin is the grandson of U.S. Senator of the same name, Sam Irvin, who gained national fame for his investigation into Watergate, which led to the resignation of then-President Richard Nixon. Irvin is running for his second term on the Supreme Court. Bill O'Neill, WXII, 12 News.